out Jeep Solid, be sure to subscribe at the end of the video. Here we're going to show how to replace a U-joint on a Jeep Wrangler. This is the rear drive shaft, and this is a three and a half inch yoke. And you can see all that play right there. That, this U-joint uh, is completely shot. I'm thinking all the needle bearings in here are just completely disintegrated. So we're going to replace that. Because the drive shaft is balanced, we want to be sure to get it back in in the exact same position. So we're going to mark all the yokes here with a little bit of fingernail polish here, some of my daughter's fingernail polish. You want to mark it with something that's not going to wipe off super easy. Next we're going to remove these strap bolts. So now we're going to pry the drive shaft out here. Make sure you have a oil pan under here because you're going to probably leak a little bit of transmission fluid here. So next we're going to remove these four snap rings off the U-joint. Just a pair of needle nose pliers and you kind of twist them out of there. There's a few different methods to get the U-joint uh, out. I'm going to show you the socket and hammer method. You can also use a vise or a press. The concept is pretty much the same. You have to have a socket that is bigger than the U-joint and one that is smaller that fits on the inside. We're going to set the larger one on the bottom faced up so that the, uh, so that the cap will fall into it. We're going to take that smaller socket and put it on top. And we're going to drive this out. Then you can use a, once it's exposed, you can use a big set of pliers to remove the cap the rest of the way. When you get one of the caps off, then the yoke should slip off. I'm going to repeat the same process for the other side. This one's giving me a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to put just a little bit of PB Blaster on it. All right, so we're going to make sure that our grease fitting is pointing towards the back because the yoke and transmission is up here. So we want to make sure it goes in in this direction. We're going to take the caps off these two ends. We're going to slip it in place. Replace the cap on one side. And then the cap on the other. Now we're essentially going to reverse the process. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get this started here first a little bit. Tap them in place. You want to get it down. You want to get it down just low enough so you can get the snap ring in. I'm going to kind of tap on it a little bit, make sure that snap ring is seated in place. Same thing on the other side, we're going to take the caps off. We're going to put the yoke back on, keeping our mark in alignment. Our mark's kind of coming off there, but I can still see it. When you set these caps on, you want to make sure that those needle bearings are in place. So you want to be kind of careful about getting it set in there and tapping it in. You don't want to use 
too much force until it's seated properly. If it requires too much force, one of your needle bearings might be out of place. Okay, we got the caps back on. I'm just going to kind of get them started here. When you're hammering the caps into place, you want to make sure, you want to watch these gaps right here and make sure that these caps get seated all the way. If you end up with a little bit of a gap here and the cap won't hammer down, you might have to pull it off because one of the needle bearings may have fallen down. You have to be real careful about keeping those needle bearings in place. All right, we've got the grease fitting in place, so we're going to go ahead and grease it now. Okay, and fit the drive shaft back in here, keeping everything lined up. And we're going to torque these strap bolts to 14 foot-pounds. Be sure to check your transmission fluid level and top it off if needed. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.